Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. We're the Dotties. My name is Rochelle. I'm your favorite Donna. And today we have some spooky books that we read in September that we absolutely love. So we're going to tell you all about them. Getting ready for pokey pokey season. Pokey pokey. Pokey pokey. So because we are approaching official spooky month, I guess October is really not a season, it's a month, but uh, we wanted to share some of our favorite reads in the month of September, which we do every single month. And we're gonna share three apiece with two honorable mentions um, that aren't spooky, <laughs> but we, I, I just had to talk about them just really quick. Um, but we both have um, really, I think they're all like spooky books, right? Um, uh, one of mine is a thriller. Well, spooky thriller, horror, that kind of thing. Two of them are horror, oh, one is thriller. Okay, okay, well. <laughs> They're spooky, they fall into that spooky category. So, um, I think you went first last time. Okay. So I'm gonna go first this time. Well, you got more to get through, too. I do. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the two honorable mentions that are not spooky spooky, but we actually both read them. Uh-huh. And I gave both of them five stars. Um, I don't know about you, but the first one is Taylor Jenkins Reid's new book, Carrie Soto is Back. I get four. This one, okay, so this is her newest release. I actually read it on September 1st. This one is, it's it's a part of the whole universe of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and Malibu Rising and now Carrie Soto. So this one takes place mainly in the 90s. Um, we follow this woman, Carrie Soto, who is like, a, like the best tennis player in the world and she retires. And we pick up where she, I think it's like six or seven years after she retired, this new up-and-comer tennis player is like slowly knocking all of her records. So she decides to come out of retirement to claim her titles once again and to prevent her records from being broken. Gary Soto was introduced in Malibu Rising. Mm -hmm. And she's not one that you would think you would like, um, especially with her introduction in Malibu Rising. She was a very, very small uh, character towards the middle end of the book and she was like that long. She well to go with spooky spooky she was a witch. Uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess they had different letters. Yeah so this one I did one I don't care about tennis I don't watch it um I don't follow the sport but I did not realize how invested I was until the very last page and the way this book ends I reacted and I voiced what? <laughs> and a couple of hours later, she finished the book and had the exact same reaction as I did. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad you finished it because I have to talk about it. I, you don't realize how invested you are in the story and in all the tennis stuff until it's over and you're like, what? What? Yeah, I listened to the audio book yes. and followed along in my Kindle and I, yeah. I liked it. Yeah, very, very good. And then the second one is a historical fiction book called Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I read that one too. This one, I would highly recommend the audio book because of the dialect in which it's written. Um, I'm, I was following along on my Kindle while listening to the audio and the way it's written can be kind of hard if you're not like from the deep south um to to like really understand it you know i'm I mean? from deep south i got it if you didn't have the audio <laughs> would you have read it as quickly oh uh, no y y it, this is a murder mystery historical fiction book that uh, we follow this this woman or this girl kaya and she's basically abandoned as a kid and i think it's in the swamp but it takes place i think in mainly in the 50s does that sound right? There's, there's a, it's been a while since I read this one too. But this one is now a movie and I really wanted to read the book because people either love the book or hate it. I fell in the love it um, because you have the present timeline. I think we're in the late 60s and there's a murder mystery a trial situation that's happening. And then you're following Kaya from like the 40s and 50s um, as she's growing up. So you kind of get her background. And it... It was so good. I was so invested in these characters and I felt so bad for Kaya and like how she lived and how she grew up and how her family home life was like. But I found myself rooting for her and how she ends up where she is in adulthood. Like it was so, it was such a good, it ends up being a good feeling book. Yeah, I liked yeah. it. It was good. It was good. So I wanted to bring those two up just in case uh, you've seen those around. I highly recommend both of those. Officially, the first book on my list, I was going back and forth between these, this author, 
So this is Katherine Ryan Howard. Now I have read three books by this author. Two of them I read in the month of September. And this is her newest release runtime. But I think the one I want to talk about is The Nothing Man. And you have heard me talk about The Nothing Man for over a week since I finished it um, last weekend. Do you have a nightmare about nightmares. The Nothing Man? Okay, so this one, highly recommend but I'm gonna talk about The Nothing Man uh, by the same author. So this is a book that we are following a serial attacker turned murderer. And the book opens with him, I think he's at work or he's, he's at a store, he's in public, and he comes across this book called The Nothing Man. And so he picks it up and it turns out to be a book about him. Um, you know, no one else knows that it's him but him. And it's written by the lone survivor in one of his murderous attacks that happened 20 years ago. And so we, we see him react to finding out this book exists. It is a huge hit, brand new release. And we see him read the book. So we actually get a book within the book called The Nothing Man. And then him reacting to like each chapter and to like every, every little thing that he reads. So we get the full entire memoir about the nothing man and how this girl survived it um and they talk about his other attacks that happened before he turned murderer and how like no one has able ever been able to find who the nothing man is but they called him the nothing man because he leaves no evidence no dna like nothing in any of his attacks so she had the the author of this book the lone survivor when she was i think 10 or 12 and now she's an adult 20 years later so she's in her 30s and so she spent time talking to the detectives and investigators on her case and then learned about the other attacks and contacted those families to get like insight into what happened um, and included them all in this book and this is just so cool to, to see a book within the book and then the bad guy reacting to it this was so good and this one terrified me it terrified me because it's one of my like my, my two biggest fears is uh, someone intruding, a uh, home intruder, uh, which is basically how he attacks. He attacks people in their homes without their knowledge and um, uh, possessed children, but there's no possessed children in this book. So those are like my two biggest fears. And this one was oozing with home intrusions. It was oozing with it. It was. Huh? It was. And this is something that I still, over a week later, am still thinking about it every night. I get a little scared, a little scared, but it is perfect for spooky season. And this author, like the the book within a book within a book, this is a movie within a, a script within the book, within the book within this book. Like it's it's very layered and it's done really well. Okay, it's you so just good. lost me on that one. <laughs> so this one, just real quick, is we're following an actress who is starring in a slasher film. And we see the script of the film, and in the script, there is a woman in a cabin reading a book. And the things that are happening in the book, in the script, is happening to the woman in the script. And all of that is happening to the actress in real life on this film set. So it's, it's layered. You have a book in the script, the script happening in real life, and it, we're reading it in a book. It is really good. It is really good. I really think you would enjoy this and The Nothing Man, for sure. This author, I'm really enjoying, but... The Nothing Man scared me. <laughs> when I was in high school, I was really, really into Stephen King. Right. Like, big time. Right. And I saw Dr. Sleep, and I was like, ooh, I really want to read Dr. Sleep, because it's the sequel to The Shining. But I decided The Shining was my favorite Stephen King book. It's been over 30 years. I'm going to reread it. Okay. So I reread The Shining. It's still awesome. Still gave it five stars. And then I read Dr. Sleep. And it was so good, y'all. It's about the little boy, Danny, when from he grows Shining. up. The okay. little boy from The Shining. Okay. When he's all grown up. Okay. And telling you, this book was so good. It's a Friday night, and I got up and went to work that morning. And it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and I am still reading. Well, I think you said it was like 2,000 pages, right? It was. It was 1,700 pages. But I read it on my Kindle, and I listened to the audio as well. 
and you finally finished it this morning. I finished it this Saturday. morning. Saturday. So the very so, next day. So you started this yesterday. I, yeah. I started it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I was stayed up until 3 o'clock in the morning until I could not stay up any yeah. longer. I yeah. was like, okay, I, I, I got to go to sleep. <laughs> and then got up this morning and finished it. But I really enjoyed it. Gave it five stars, too. So in The Shining, um, this guy is, he, he goes to become a caretaker for this hotel that's in the Colorado Rockies. But it's way high up in the mountains, so it shuts down during the winter time because the mountain roads are too hard to pass. Mm -hmm. So they just completely shut it down, and just the caretaker, his wife, and his son are there. Until it's Is this the Bates Motel? No. Oh, what's the, the Overlook? Okay, what's the Bates Motel from? What That's Bates from Psycho. Oh, it's from Psycho, which is not Stephen King. Okay, yeah, okay, go ahead. All right. So it's, they're Overlook at the Hotel. Overlook Hotel. Okay. And it starts with them, and while they're there, the hotel has malevolent stuff going on. And um, the dad thinks that they want him, but they really want the kid, Danny, because Danny, his, he's special. He, he can read minds. He knows he can read his mom and dad's mind. The cook, yeah, the cook r recognized the sh what they call the shine in the little boy the very first time he met him and he kind of pulls him aside and talks to him and says there's some stuff that goes on here and you kind of got the shine so you might need to be careful and if you need me just holler the kid's like four or five and he, he can't use a phone or nothing so then the cook teaches him this little mind trick where they can speak to each other telepathically from Colorado to Florida. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's The Shining. So, for those who haven't read it, I've only seen the movie. I've never... The book is totally different than the movie. It has a completely different ending. Gotcha. Well, cause I've, I've never read a Stephen King book, but when I was in high school, I was also obsessed with Stephen King, um, but movies. movies. I, was, I was really yeah. scary movies. The because the book is different than the movie The Shining, the sequel follows Danny after he is a grown-up. He fights with alcoholism and stuff all his life because of what he dealt with in the original Shining. Okay. And finally, he's like, all right, I'm going to clean up, I'm going to straighten up, and he ends up through some kind of weird power stuff, you know, the mind, mind power stuff. Okay. He ends up at this place in this town and somewhere close to Boston. And he ends up staying in this little bitty town and he gets a sponsor who helps him dry out and everything. Mm -hmm. And then while he's in AA, he meets a doctor who's also in AA. The doctor also happens to be the pediatrician for this little girl that can do stuff that Danny could do when Danny was little. They figure out that Danny can still do it. Danny can still do some of this stuff like he could when he was little. And they find out that this little girl can do this too. They end up teaming up and helping each other defeat some people that go around killing little kids that have that ability. Yeah, it was really good. I liked it. So, both of them, five stars. <laughs> the Shining still holds up. And Dr. Sleep kept me up all night. I needed a doctor to sleep because <laughs> I was so invested. <laughs> so, the next author I want to talk about is possibly one of my new favorite thriller authors. And this is Megan Golden. Here, you need help? Yes. <laughs> Um, so I read all three of these books this month. Um, I started with one of her earlier. I think this is her debut, The Escape Room. Then I read The Night Swim. and I, then I've I read, already read this one. And then I read her newest release, Stay Awake. And I'm really debating on which one to talk about because this one it takes place in a locked room. I mean, obviously it's the escape room. And it takes place in an, in an elevator in like a construction site with high power Wall Street people. So high, high power high Wall stakes. Street people. You know, Wall, Wall Street 
people. Bikers. Rich people. <laughs> and then this one. Oh, okay. I'm going to talk about Stay Awake because this is one you haven't read. You I haven't read that one. Slim, so you know what that one's all about. This one is her newest release, and this one has been getting kind of mediocre reviews, but I absolutely loved it. So we're following this woman, and she wakes up in the back of a cab, and she has no idea where she is or what's going on, so she tells her cab to go to my apartment. She goes to her apartment, and it's no longer her apartment. There's this other couple who lives there. They think she's crazy because she's, this is my home. What are you doing here? Um, she has all this writing on her hands and on her arms that says, stay awake, don't trust anybody, uh, don't fall asleep, whatever you do. Um, because what happens is every time she falls asleep, her memory resets to two years ago. And the last thing she remembers is being at work in New York and answering the phone. And that's like the last of her memory until she wakes up. And so she has no idea what's happened in these past two years. Um, this is so, so good because there is a murder that happens that she has the murder weapon. When she wakes up, it's covered in blood. There is a message on the window that says, wake up. Um, and she's like, what did I do? <laughs> What did I do? Um, so it's piecing together all this information. Now it is a little repetitive in the fact that every time she does doze off, she wakes up and she is like, where am I at? It's the middle of summer and I was at work and now it's fall and I'm on a bench in New York City. Like what happened? Um, so there's a little bit of a repetition, but it is gla glazed over really quickly every time she does wake up. Um, so it's not, it, very reminiscent of 50 First Dates and how that movie, she, she wakes up to the same day every day. Um, very reminiscent of that, but super, super thrilling. And we're following also the detective who is trying to find out, you know, who murdered this poor guy that, you know, we find, we find out what happened to him and how they're connected and who she is and her backstory. And it is so good. There is a huge action scene towards the end of the book that my heart was pumping reading it. it. This one is so good. But all, really all of these by this author are just so well done and they're so very different. Um, so I'm really enjoying books by this author. So read her newest one if you've never read from her before. I really enjoyed it. You would think that one would make you not want to go to sleep. You would think, but it's there's no like monster. Yeah, there's a murder. And yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's some things that, you know, are just thrilling, but not like someone hiding in your, sh in the shadows of your house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I swear the nothing man is, oh man, it's gotten me. My last one is, uh, another two parter, but so far I've only read one of them. Oh, this yeah, is yeah, by yeah. Jennifer Hillier. Yes. And this is great called author. Creep. Okay. Yes. I've already got the audiobook and the Kindle book for Freak in my Kindle Unlimited. Both Which of these part two. are Kindle Freak, Unlimited. Creep and Freak duology kind of a thing. Yeah. So Creep, the first one, there's this professor. Okay. And she is engaged to get married to this rich guy from Texas. And uh, she had a three-month affair with her student assistant when she says, okay, the wedding's coming up. We ain't gonna do this no more because I feel guilty about it. Okay. So, Stop. yeah. <laughs> okay. And the student assistant person doesn't take that very kindly and then... Because he's a creep. Cause, well, creep plays in the song, I'm a oh. Creep, actually plays into it. There's also a... Uh, a swim uh, person. A swimmer? Yeah, a, a swimmer. swimmer. Uh, that's a big deal at this college. Okay. That was recently pulled up out of the water from the lake and she drowned. How can you drown if you're, if a, swimmer. you're a swimmer? Highly intoxicated. That could work. That so. would be the only reason why a really strong swimmer would drown. Yeah, so... My guess. Yeah, so this professor is dealing with one of her students that has just been washed up dead, okay. who shouldn't have drowned because she was a really good swimmer, mm -hmm. and she's also dealing with this her crazy TA. Crazy, yeah, her TA. He don't want just, it to end. He don't want it to end. 
and it, it gets really interesting. Well, I will say Jennifer Hillier is another thriller author that I've read three books from. I haven't read Creep or Freak, but I've heard really great things about those two books in particular. But um, I've read three books by this author and I am slowly wanting to go back through her backlist because she has a lot of really great books according to you know reviews that we've seen. Um, and I really liked the three that I read from her. Yeah. So I want to keep reading from her as well. Yeah. Okay, and then the last one that I read that I want to talk about, Perfect for Spooky Season, because this is a true horror book. And I think this is my first book, maybe my second, in the horror genre. Like, for real horror genre. I had to talk her into reading this one. She is scared to read it. I put on my big girl pants and I read <laughs> Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. And this one had me squirming a little bit. So she read this a couple of months ago and I was like, you know, I think, I think I'm going to try it. Give him a try because I've heard really great things about this author as well. And another booktuber that is kind of, you know, chicken like me, um, <laughs> she finally read this and she gave her review and I was like, you know what? Okay. That's the, that's the shove I needed to, to get this book read. And Someone told me that I could handle it. I did. I thought you could. I said there, there was, was one part. scene that I thought might get to you. And the one scene didn't get to me, but there was about three <laughs> others that did. Um, this one did have me squirming a little bit. Now, the, the scenes that made me squirm is because, one, I'm a chicken. But um, but it's also, it's not for, like, pages and pages of, like, detail and grotesque, like, descriptions or anything like that. It's just really quick sections, and they, they, were, they were over really quickly, which I appreciated, but this is essentially about a woman we're following um, who lives in this neighborhood. She's you know, friends with her neighbors and things, and they start a book club. And what's really cool about this book is that it's broken out into sections based on the book that they're reading in the book club. And so they, they get together, they're, they're reading like, you know, really uh, prestigious books basically and everyone's bored so they decide let's read some like true crime or you know some thrillers and stuff so they basically revamped their whole book club which is really fun but there is this guy who moves into the neighborhood really cute really friendly whatever so of course everyone starts to get to know him but the woman that we're following it kind of has her suspicions and some things just don't don't quite add up for her, like she has this gut feeling. Everybody else loves him. Everybody else loves him. The, the wives, the husbands, they all love this guy. Um, there is something that happens and she has like basically a mental breakdown, essentially. And we have a three year time jump. And there are just some things that happen in this, in this book that uh, will gross you out, but not like super badly, I don't think. I mean, I, I was able to get through it and I am the biggest chicken ever. But um, by the end of this book, you do have all of these moms who basically do whatever they need to do to, to protect their children. And it's just a long journey to get there because there's only one mom who has a really bad feeling. Um, and no one, no one believes her. Yeah. No one believes her. Takes her a while to convince people. Yes. But this is just so good. Perfect for spooky season. And I mean, it has slaying vampires right there in the title. So, you know, it, it's, it's really good. Um, I, I am going to read a couple of more books from this author. I think, um, especially if like the books don't have like super lengthy, grotesque descriptions of things. If he keeps this style in his other books, then I would like to read them. I've read a, fruit, a few of them. Yeah, well, I'm not going to trust you anymore. <laughs> There's only one scene that's going to get you. Well, I forgot about that one. Well, I forgot about three other scenes I... that had me squirming. And that one that you told me about was like, ew, but okay. <laughs> it was not a big deal. So, and I, whenever I remind you, you're like, oh, I forgot about that. See, I, I forgot. Know. So I'm not going to trust you. <laughs> so here is a look at some of the book recommendations that we have specifically for spooky season. So leave a comment down below. Let us know if you have read any of these books or read from these authors, or if um, you have any spooky book recommendations for us that we can read in the month of October as we are leading up to Halloween. Um, we love to hear all your book recommendations and let us know what you guys think about these. But that's going to do it for us today. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Bye. Bye.